in over 2.5 million years of evolution, one of the greatest efforts the human species has focused on has been the development of increasingly effective technologies that have been used for waging war at a distance. With increasingly sophisticated weapons and accurate data collection, one is now capable of hitting a target anywhere in the world with a missile launched from a remote piloted drone flying over 10,000 meters above the sky. In pursuing remote warfare, humanity has exceeded all expectations. But can we use the advances of technology to build back better from afar? This question was posed to me and my team five months ago, when we were introduced to the possibility of engaging in an international collaboration effort that asked us to look beyond the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and start planning ahead. As architects and urban planners, we are aware of the fact that designing means building at a distance of time. A building is born today to live 30, 50, 100 years. And if instead we refer to cities or places, we know that they should be planned in a way that would allow them to grow and adapt for hundreds of years more. We are professionals that work to build, with the future always in mind. And in this case, we were called in to help rebuild and give shape to a vision for the future of a city. My name is Anna Paetz, and I am an urban and transport planner with OneWorks, a design consultancy firm headquartered in Milan. And since May, I have been leading the team that, under the general coordination of the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, has been working on drafting the guidelines and future master plan for the city of Mykolaiv. Mykolaiv is Ukraine's ninth largest city. It's located in the south of the country. It holds a strategic position due to its direct connection with the Black Sea by water and the fact that it is home to an internationally renowned shipbuilding industry. Today, the city is at the front line of war. Bordering the Kherson territory, it has been bombarded all but 22 non-consecutive days since the start of the war in February. Under this current scenario, we were contacted by Unici as part of their international efforts to mobilize architects and planners throughout the globe in order to work together with local experts on developing forward-thinking, people-centric master plans for the reconstruction of Ukrainian cities once conditions allowed for this to happen. This approach might seem premature to some, considering the uncertainties that we're currently living. But instead, we believe that this too shall pass. And once it does, we need to be ready to rebuild. As architect Norman Foster often reminds us, the master plan for the reconstruction of the city of London, which was devastated by World War II bombings, was made in 1943, during the war's darkest hour. The war ended in 1945, and by the time that it was over, London had a clear vision to follow towards a brighter future. Today, over half a century later, the advances in technology and the willingness to collaborate beyond our territorial frontiers have allowed us to mitigate the challenges posed by physical distance in order to make the process that I am about to describe to you possible. Our first contact with the city of Mykolaiv was through an, an online meeting held on August 15th with the mayor, Mr. Alexander Sienkiewicz, and city council members. During this meeting, the mayor described to us a critical situation of daily conflict and continuous loss. But during this conversation, something else struck us. The mayor had understood the importance of data collection way before war hit his city, and he had invested in it. 
In 2019, he had commissioned a team of local experts in order to build a GIS database that would map all of the elements present in the city up to date. For us, as architects, engineers, and urban planners, this database represented a literal gold mine, an invaluable technological tool that would allow us to set the basis for the city's future reconstruction. But while the availability of the data and the technology to handle it are key factors in order to allow us to build back better from afar, what was immediately clear to me and my team was the fact that we would only be successful in reaching our goal if we were able to trigger an unprecedented process of collaboration. With our task force composed of multidisciplinary professionals and academics largely based in Milan, physical distance posed a challenge for us all. In order to overcome this, we started organizing online meetings with Mikolais, architects, engineers, members of the Board of Architects, municipality technicians, civic leaders, and organizations that still have people on the ground in Mikolais today. This collaboration is allowing us to exchange information and knowledge on a weekly basis so that in real time, we are learning from the needs of a city today, but at the same time, we're also learning what its technical team envisions will be the needs of the city of tomorrow. More importantly, we have also been able to actively involve Mikolaev's civil society through a detailed questionnaire that has been launched through various media channels we have been able to collect 6,000 responses throughout the first five days. With that, the city's population is providing us once again with inviolable data in real time. While through this process, we hope that they also get the message that they are not alone. As the journey continues, we've had the privilege of intervening in events such as the 83rd session of the Unici Committee on Urban Development, Housing and Land Management. I was humbled by the opportunity to be able to address the delegations personally, but I also wanted to urge them for support. For I believe that in the future that we envision as planners and architects, collaboration should see no frontiers. If we are able to abstract ourselves from today and from the ongoing war conflicts in the world, we are able to see that there is a much greater battle ahead. And that is the battle of climate change. This is a fight that we will only be able to overcome if we are standing on the same side, as it needs to see all nations come together under a single frontier, planet Earth. Thinking about this, it is only right that the pillars that give shape to the cities of tomorrow place sustainability at their core. Our cities today produce 80% of the world's wealth, but they are also the ones that produce 60% of the world's CO2 emissions. These emissions are largely related to transportation, industry, and our built environment. These are all elements that a forward-thinking master plan needs to tackle in order to make the cities of tomorrow truly resilient. Under this scenario, it becomes clear how the collaboration with Mikolaev has an added value. It is the opportunity to bring together professionals of different cultures and backgrounds in order to imagine a city that is not only capable of rebuilding itself, but that it is also capable of implementing sustainable planning tools that will ensure its survival. Being very mindful of this last point, and taking into consideration the collaboration and input of all of those that have been involved throughout this process, we have together agreed that our pillars for the future vision of Mikolaev will be 
to strengthen the city's green networks in order to reduce heat islands in the city center through the introduction of green belts and corridors. Affordable housing by introducing new housing, but also regenerating the old. Industrial development and innovation, which will ensure the city's future economic legacy. Sustainable mobility, and this is about the introduction of hierarchized public transportation systems that will decrease private car dependencies and, as such, CO2 emissions in the city. And last but not least, are two intangible pillars that we allow to make everything we can touch with our hands possible. Governance, and this is about capacity building through our collaborative approach, and community engagement, not only to build consensus, but to rebuild together. This is a story that is still being written, and I don't know what the outcome will be. But I can tell you that as a young professional, I am every day amazed about how our willingness to collaborate beyond our territorial frontiers and the understanding of how to use differently the technologies that we have at hand are allowing us to overcome the greatest of challenges from afar, bringing us every day one step forward that we never thought would be possible. So coming back to my original question, can we use the advances of technology to build back better from afar? I believe we can. And that even when we do not have the political power as architects and urban planners, we do have the responsibility to lead this kind of collaboration processes between professionals and the civil society in order to create sustainable planning tools. We cannot undo what has been done, but I firmly believe that we can come together to overcome the challenges posed by distances of space and time in order to build back better. Thank you.